Yep, that works. Hi there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics. In today's video, I'm going to show some of the saw blade testing that I've been doing for my new robot shrapnel mine. The idea behind this robot is to be able to use the hinged front forks to prop another robot up on its side with its base plate facing my robot, and then saw into the base plate of the robot with my saw arm as it comes down while the forks angle forwards. I'm hoping that I will be able to take this to my advantage to cut through the least armored spot on most robots, and in a location where most robots don't even have the ability to add extra armor if they wanted to, because then their wheels would be too far from the ground. The goal of my testing for today was basically to determine if this weapon can be effective at all, cutting through the types of materials I would expect to find on the bottoms of robots, and also try and figure out what ways in which I might be able to optimize it. After some initial testing, I also put on a longer arm so that the saw stuck out a little bit more in front of the forks, and I think that that also helped with the future tests that I did. I tested cutting through three different materials. I used two old chassis for my Antweight Robot Mini Mulcher, one of which was red PLA, the other of which was black nylon, and I also tried cutting through some aluminum, both on an old version of Division's frame and an old Division base plate and upright which were all varying thicknesses of a couple different aluminum alloys that were about the same hardness. And that is probably one of the more difficult materials that I might be expected to cut through that's actually on another robot. Something I learned early on in my tests, which I wasn't expecting, was that I had to switch the direction the saw would spin. Uh, it turned out that having the teeth facing downwards and spinning the saw downwards actually caused a ton of problems because instead of the cutting forces being able to allow me to push through the material, they would just make my robot basically do a backflip onto itself. When I didn't have the electronics fully constrained, as I have now in my janky test setup, the robot had the saw spinning, tried to push it into a metal base plate on the wall of my test box, and then it backflipped up and over and sawed through its own motor wires. So it took me a little bit to fix all of that. After fixing that, I switched the direction that the saw would spin and had the teeth facing upwards, and that way, it pushed my robot into the floor, but pushed the thing I was trying to cut upwards a little bit. However, once the saw made a little bit of a divot, it kind of stuck in that divot and prevented the thing from raising even further. So, although I did have some of these things taped against the wall of my test box just to make sure they didn't fall over and whatnot, you can see the tape comes pretty loose from the wall and it's still able to keep cutting. And in some cases, I'm cutting through a pretty lightweight plastic piece without anything holding it in place, and it still continues to cut without launching the thing up behind me most of the time. That's not even the impressive part. Cut little notches straight through here where I didn't have a very good angle on it, but most impressively, went straight through two parts that were 16th inch thick aluminum. No problem, as long as it had the leverage to do so. So yeah, I'm reasonably happy with the cutting performance. It just needs a bit more reach to be able to get at the nice juicy bits of a robot. So I might move to a slightly bigger saw blade because I now know that it actually has the torque to cut through aluminum. Right now I have enough weight to play with that I can potentially make the saw a larger diameter and I can add or remove teeth from the saw. The one that I'm doing all of my testing with right now is 2.25 inches in diameter and has 24 teeth. I also have 18 tooth saws of the same diameter but I would have to order new saws cut if I make any that are a larger diameter, or different tooth counts from those. Well, it's actually working, holy shit. Oh, 
a lot of reach, unfortunately. You can really see here how hard of a time I was having cutting through this aluminum plate. I don't know why, but the saw just refused to go all the way through. I think it might have something to do with just the fact that the further that a circle starts to intersect a rectangle, the more and more volume that it needs to get to intersect. So it's basically removing way, way, way more material the further in it gets on a flat surface like this. But at the same time, it definitely should keep going at least somewhat and it wasn't so I think that there must be something else going on maybe having fewer teeth would help maybe more teeth would help maybe your smaller or bigger diameter would help let me know what you think in the comments one issue that I didn't have a chance to show on camera because I needed to deal with it rather expediently was that one of the batteries I was using when I was doing that cutting test and not getting through the aluminum at all Due to the fact the motor was being loaded the whole time, the battery was just pushing out so much current it got really, really hot. Now, this battery is rated for 75C current discharge, which would mean it should be able to handle discharging more than 32 amps, but as I discussed in my recent electronics video, manufacturers all lie about their C ratings and their statements are completely meaningless on that front, and there's not much to go off of to trust them, so when it got way too hot and started to puff up, I threw it in a lipo bag and chucked it outside to make sure it wouldn't explode inside of my house. And thankfully, nothing bad happened, but it was definitely pretty close. So I just bought some new lipos, which hopefully will be here in about a week that I can test out with. And in the meantime, I'll be working on trying to redesign the chassis to actually hold all the electronics inside of it and hopefully have more of a together robot for a week or two from now to test. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.